Hey everyone, welcome to BCP Med. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Lewis structures for polyatomic ions and radicals, which are molecules with unpaired electrons. Drawing the Lewis structures for these is a little bit different than drawing the Lewis structure for non-charged and uh, non-radical molecules. However, the basic premises are the same. There's just some intervening steps that need to be taken care of. Let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, what is a polyatomic ion? Well, a polyatomic ion is a group of bonded atoms which has more or less electrons than the sum of its neutral atoms. And a polyatomic ion is going to happen typically when a hydrogen ion is added to a lone pair to give a positive ion, such as the ammonium ion, or when electrons are taken in to avoid having unpaired electrons, i.e. a radical, which is somewhat unstable. So we can pick up electrons and get an overall minus charge to alleviate that unpaired electron strain. Some very common polyatomic ions are going to include ammonium and hydronium for our positive ions, as well as some nitrogen ions, nitrite and nitrate, NO2- and NO3- respectively. There's also some common sulfur-based ions, SO42- and SO32-, sulfate and sulfite. Some phosphorus ions, PO43- and PO33-, phosphate and phosphite. We also have carbonates, which is a CO32- species, and CN-, the cyanide ion. Finally, we also have the uh, oxyanions for chlorine, perchlorate, chlorate, chlorite, and hypochlorite, all of which are very commonly seen. We want to be dr comfortable drawing the Lewis structures for all of these ions by the end of this video. So the strategies for ionic Lewis structures are going to be very similar. We're going to, like usual, identify the central and peripheral atoms first. And then, before making any positioning or bonds though, this is where the difference is, we're going to add or remove the ion charge number of electrons from the central atom. So whatever the charge of the polyatomic ion is, before we do any uh, drawing in valence electrons, we're just gonna go ahead and add or remove that many electrons from the central atom. So let's go ahead and look at the carbonate ion, CO3 to minus. So carbonate is going to have C as the central atom because it's less electronegative and singular, whereas oxygen is more electronegative and uh, pl plural. So in this case, C is going to be our central atom, and our base carbon is going to look like this. It has four electrons. However, this ion is going to have a two minus charge, which means we need to add two electrons, right? So we're going to add two electrons to our central atom to get the following carbon, our C2-, which has six electrons. We can do the same with the ammonium ion. So before we go any further in drawing the Lewis structure, I want to show you what it looks like when you have a positive charge. So ammonium, N is going to be the central atom because hydrogen is peripheral always. And our base nitrogen is going to have five electrons because N is a group 15 atom. But in this case, we're going to have a positive charge, which means we need to remove one electron from our Lewis structure if we want to draw it properly. So N is now going to have four electrons with a positive charge. So having put in our valence electrons around all of our central atoms, like usual, we want to position the peripheral atoms and match the electrons that are unpaired and match any vacancies in the peripheral electrons we then want to make all the necessary single bonds. So for example, let's go back to our carbonate ion species. We have our C2- central atom, and we're going to position around it our three oxygens for CO3-. We, ni we nicely pair up each of the carbon pairs with the vacancy in each of the oxygen octets, and then each of the oxygens will steal that lone pair from the carbon to form a single bond. Now, each of the oxygens will have a nice octet formed by those single bonds, whereas the carbon is still electron deficient, and we'll come back to that later. But uh, let's go ahead and look at how that will factor in for ammonia, or um, for the nitrogen. Nitrogen has four electrons, and we're going to position all of the hydrogens around it such that each hydrogen gets one electron to pair off with its lone electron. And then we go ahead and simply form the uh, bond to each of the hydrogens to get the NH4 plus structure. And at this point, we are done. Nitrogen will have an octet, eight electrons, two from each bond, and all of the hydrogens have their one bond, and they are happy. 
So we then need to go ahead and move on to stage three for the carbonate ion since carbon is still electron deficient. So then as usual, to complete the octet, we're going to use lone pairs from the peripheral atoms to form extra bonds. Those higher order double and triple bonds are going to come from the lone pairs of the peripheral atoms. And then for the final Lewis structure of a polyatomic ion, we want to use brackets to denote the overall charge of that structure. So for example, if we look at the CO3 2 minus structure, we see that carbon is electron deficient. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take a lone pair from the oxygen, one of them, it doesn't really matter which, and then we're going to need to fold it into that carbon. So let's say we take this one and we go ahead and fold it to form a double bond at that position. That will give us the following structure for CO3 2 minus, where the overall charge of 2 minus is indicated by the brackets around the structure. In the case of the ammonium ion, NH4+, there is no more bonds to fold in because the octets are all full. However, properly, we would represent the structure as follows with the overall bracket and a positive charge. Let's go ahead and take a look at another simple polyatomic ion, the cyanide ion, Cn-. So in this case, there is no central atom, so we could really choose either atom to take on the negative charge. In this case, Right? Carbon is going to have four electrons, and nitrogen is going to have five. So we're going to need to add one electron. It doesn't really matter which we add it to, but I want to go ahead and add it to the more electronegative atom, because in my head, that makes more sense. The more electronegative atom is going to pick up that electron. And so nitrogen is going to go from N with five valence electrons to N minus with six. Then we're going to pair up our two atoms such that the lone pairs from one will line up with the vacancies in the other. Since nitrogen is closer to an octet, I think it makes sense to put the lone pairs in the carbon to fill the nitrogen vacancy. And so we can go ahead then and use this carbon pair to form a bond with the nitrogen, which will look as follows. Now we have a single bond. However, we're not done. Nitrogen has an octet, but carbon only has four electrons. So we need to go ahead and use some of those nitrogen lone pairs to form higher order bonds to make carbon happy. So let's say we take this pair and we create a double bond there. That is going to give us the following structure, where now we have nitrogen again with eight electrons because it nothing has changed by moving one of its lone pairs. Carbon now has six though, so we're still a little bit shy. Let's go ahead and take another lone pair from nitrogen and fold it in to form a triple bond. Now we have Cn, where the nitrogen has 8 and the carbon has 8, thanks to the triple bond. However, in this case, because it's an ion, the cyanide ion should be denoted with brackets around the Cn and a minus charge overall. You could go ahead and look at the formal charges for this to determine which atom has the formal charge, and it turns out that that is going to be the carbon. The carbon is going to carry the formal minus charge in the structure. And if you have, if you don't know what formal charges are, formal charges are, take a look at our Lewis or Lewis dot video on formal charges. So some funny things happen when the central atom is capable of hypervalence. Specifically, when the central atom is capable of hypervalence and we have oxygen in the periphery, we will form oxy ions with very high order bonds all around. We'll form many double bonds to the central atom to minimize formal charges. Let's take a look at what that might look like. For example, if we have SO4 2 minus, we'll go ahead and put our sulfur atom at the center with those two extra electrons to have eight valence electrons total. The oxygen atoms will go and attack, and each one will steal one lone pair from the sulfur atom to fill its octet, and that will form four single bonds, as denoted by this structure here. This is a valid Lewis structure for SO4 2 minus, since we have a full set of octets on every atom. However, we will have formal charges on each atom as well, and formal charges put strain on the molecule due to their electrostatic interaction between plus and minus charges. So if we go ahead and calculate the formal charges for each, we would find that each oxygen carries a minus one charge. You can go ahead and calculate it yourself. And the sulfur carries a plus two charge. So we want to minimize those charges by folding in the plus and minus charges together. So let's go ahead and see what that would look like, right? So let's say we take this, formal, this uh, lone pair from this oxygen and fold it into a double bond. That will reduce the formal charges here from plus 2 and negative 1 to plus 1 and 0. However, plus 1 is still not 0, and so we can go ahead and fold another lone pair into that sulfur and reduce the formal charges in the sulfur to 0, 
and that'll give us the following structure. In this case, the oxygen atoms on top carry formal charges, but everything else has been reduced to zero, and that is preferred. And so the overall Lewis structure would then be given as such with brackets, or I apologize, not a minus one, but a two minus around in brackets as such, where the formal charges add up to the overall ion charge. The two minus ones add up to the two minus. Another possible uh, ion that has this problem is the perchlorate ion, or ClO4 minus. Right? So chlorine is going to be our central atom because it's singular. And we're going to take our chlorine, which has seven, and add one electron to give us a full eight for the octet. Just like in SO4 2 minus, each oxygen will attack and take one lone pair to itself to give us the following structure. Now, in this case, the formal charges will be as follows. Each oxygen will be at minus one, and chlorine, which typically has seven valence electrons, is actually going to be at a plus three valence, which is pretty high, or rather a plus three formal charge, which is pretty high. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did with the sulfur, and we're going to fold in all of our lone pairs where possible into double bonds to reduce our formal charges to zero on the outside and the chlorine to zero as well. And so that'll look like this. Uh, and I ended up choosing a different oxygen than I did in the Lewis structure, but that's totally fine. Um, the ClO4 molecule will have three double bonded oxygens and one single bonded oxygen. The single bonded oxygen will carry a minus one formal charge, which is where the ClO4 ion gets its overall minus charge from. This is preferred to the structure with formal charges on each oxygen and is only possible because Cl can expand its valence. It's very important to understand when this is possible, and I strongly encourage you to check out our video on hypervalent structures to make sure you are doing it properly. So at this point, I want to go ahead and move on to the second part of the video, which is going to be identifying radicals and drawing their Lewis structures. Radicals are atoms or molecules that have unbonded electrons that are also unpaired. So it's lone unbonded electrons that are very reactive. You can identify whether or not a molecule will be a radical just from its formula based on whether or not it has an odd number of total valence electrons. Right? So that's going to be the sum of the individual atom valences plus any net charge assigned to the molecule if it's a polyatomic ion. An easy way to tell for certain molecules is if there is a neutral molecule that has an odd number of group 15 plus group 17 atoms. So atoms like nitrogen, fluorine, and chlorine, if there's an odd combination of those, like one nitrogen or three nitrogens or one nitrogen and two chlorines, those are going to always have an odd number of electrons and therefore will create a radical necessarily. We can also have monoatomic radicals, which are just lone uh, atoms that don't have paired electrons, like monoatomic hydrogen or monoatomic chlorine. Molecular radicals are far more interesting, though. So, for example, if we look at the molecule NO2, we see that it has an odd number of group 15 atoms. It only has one nitrogen, and so it's impossible for it to pair off that last electron, since there's an odd number of total valence electrons in the molecule as a whole. And its Lewis structure will look like this. It will have that one dot over the nitrogen, which has no pairs. So drawing radicals can be a little bit tricky, because oftentimes you want to go ahead and fill the octet, but with a radical, you can't. So you can end up frustrating yourself quite a bit. If you have a neutral molecule that has a nitrogen, phosphorus, or halogens, save yourself the trouble and do a quick radical check. Is the sum of group 15 plus group 17 atoms odd? If it is, you are going to have a radical. For example, consider the molecule NO2. It has one nitrogen, which means you have an odd number of group 15 plus 17, and it will be a radical. There's nothing you can do about it. So you go ahead and you uh, draw out your valence electrons on each of the atoms, and then you want what you want to do is when you position the peripheral atoms, you want to take the lone electron and set it aside. Don't try to use it to make any bonds because you won't be able to. So that nitrogen, that lone electron that's unpaired, don't worry about it. Just get rid, you know, set it aside. So you're going to go ahead and position the oxygens around the pairs so that each of the oxygens can take one pair and it's going to ignore that lone electron. And you're going to form the single bonds as shown here, right? In this case, the nitrogen is still pretty electron starved, having only five electrons, so you're going to want to bump it up a little bit closer to an octet by using some of the lone pairs on the peripheral oxygens. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take, let's say, this lone pair, 
and fold it into a double bond to give us this structure here. You know, and that's perfectly fine. Now, each oxygen still has an octet, but nitrogen now has seven electrons. There is nothing you can do. It, it is stuck at seven electrons, right? So when you try to fill the octets, you will see that when you have an odd number of 15 and 17 elements, you won't be able to fill it completely. You're going to get stuck at seven electrons, and you must stop here because it's improper to proceed. This is the correct Lewis dot structure for NO2. Don't try to push it any further. And so to round out our discussion here, I want to go ahead and take a look at another common radical so that we don't just leave it off with that same NO2 example over and over again. And that a radical, a common radical is going to be nitric oxide or NO. So NO has one nitrogen atom, which means off the bat, you know, it must be a radical. It has an odd number of group 15 elements. So we can go ahead and draw our valence picture for each atom, five and six respectively. But that lone electron on the nitrogen here is not going to want to play. It's going to stay by itself when we draw the Lewis picture. So that oxygen is going to steal one pair from the nitrogen to form a single bond. Oxygen is now happy with an octet, but nitrogen is starved. So we're going to go ahead and fold in one of those oxygen pairs to give us a double bond. And that's all she wrote. Nitrogen now has seven valence electrons, thanks to the four from the bonds and the lone pair here plus that one lone radical electron. Oxygen has a full octet, but there's nothing you can do to further combine them to make an octet for nitrogen. And so this is in fact the overall structure for the NO molecule. And with that, we've actually reached the end of the content for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. To learn more, take a look at our other videos in the chemistry playlist, and if you're looking to branch out, check out our other science playlists as well. See you next time!